So to start milling a board, the first thing we gotta do, turn the machine on and make sure the cover is closed. And we're going to use this PC to run a program called Circuit Pro. Circuit Pro is the interface from the PC that has your design to turn it into instructions for the machine to follow. We're going to find the project that we want to make. In this case, this is going to be the uh, fail board. So to start milling a board, the first thing we got to do is turn the machine on and make sure the cover is closed. And we're going to use this PC to run a program called Circuit Pro. Circuit Pro is the interface from the PC that has your design to turn it into instructions for the machine to follow. We're going to find the project that we want to make. In this case, this is going to be the uh, fail board. So at this point, I've opened up the board that I want to mill and we need to make sure that it is prepared for uh, the manufacturing process. And to do that, what we're going to do is click on the generate insulation item. And for this particular board, I've chosen to do a full rub out. Um, I also want to make sure that my primary tool is a, the 0 0.2 millimeter uh, universal cutter. This dialog allows me to also choose if I wanted to have extra insulation or any other special um, uh, items or options. Um, I think for most of the projects that we're going to do, this is the defaults here are sufficient. Um, the contour routing allows me to choose how I want the board to be um, cut out. In this case, we'll have just the corners of the board. Um, but you could choose, for instance, to have um, more tabs, um, but more, also more cutout. Um, this might be good for a very large board where the little four corner tabs aren't enough to hold it in place. Um, you could even choose to um, just have vertical gaps, horizontal gaps, no gaps, which is not recommended. Or, or even if you take out the board outline, you could even choose not to have any uh, contour at all. So for this particular board I know they're very small I'll probably just keep it here on the corners um, or else if it was a larger board I could do equidistant. So let's start. The um, software will take our board design and all of the different options and determine exactly what tools are needed to make this board. Um, and so at this point uh, everything should be all okay. So we hit close. The next thing we do is we prepare the board for um, processing. And to do that, I use the wizard and I'll use the board production wizard. Um, in this case, it says I'm not connected to the machine. Um, if that happens, we're going to use the machining ta uh, toolbar and go to connect. And um, I'm not actually connected to a real machine right now. Um, but if I was, I would choose S63. I'm going to pick on virtual um, so I can actually use this for demonstration purposes. And the software pretends it's connected to a machine. And the screen changes from the cam view to the machining view. And at this point, it shows me the board layout. Um, I've actually chosen to do this board as a four up board. We'll see that on one of the dialogues. 
Um, over in this window, um, it shows me the machine controls. So um, we can expand this. We can actually see all of the different choices. Um, I can move the, the head of the machine to different places. Right now, it's down here in the home position. Um, we can go to the pause position or to its uh, zero position, which is up here in the corner. Um, we can also scroll down and choose between selecting the milling head versus the camera versus a dispenser, an optional dispenser. Um, in particular, what we're really after is the operate tab. This allows me to pick uh, different steps of processing and um, we can use this when we resume from later steps. Um, I can still change my view here. So I, for instance, I can go to toolpath and I can see all of the different tool paths um, that are generated by the uh, uh, toolpath tool. Um, anyway, uh, without going too far into the weeds, um, what, we're do, what we're ready to do now is actually to begin. Um, so now that we're connected, I can go back to the board production wizard and it will walk me through the steps and it says to mount the base material onto the board, um, which I'll do. It does say to use adhesive tape. Because I know that we're next step here is to do the drills, those drills are the only thing it's going to do and there's really not a lot of uh, sliding around action on the machine. So we don't need to tape it down for this step. There's a vacuum table that will hold the board in place. Um, later on, when we go to actually cut the board, we'll put tape on. So we'll have a board for you where you'll see the professor for the board. It'll look like a copper sheet, almost eight and a half by 11. Um, it's like an A4 series paper because it's European. Um, we make sure that the white foam tray is flat and free of debris. Um, sometimes we'll take the edge of the board and scrape it down just to make sure it's free. Kind of center it, it doesn't have to be terribly precise. This first stage we're just going to be uh, drilling holes to prepare it for the electroplater, so I'm not even going to worry about um, taping it down. All processing has to happen. Um, this screen that comes up is saying that the tool might expire shortly. Um, this is related to the, the, the concept that the um, software is tracking the use, the lifetime of the tool, how long it's been in contact with the board. And apparently this tool will either, um, is already exceeded or will expire during the processing of this board. Um, if you're not sure how to proceed, you can contact your faculty member or Mr. Boyum. The, uh, tool that's in the in the machine should be sufficient. If it's not, we'll arrange to get you a new one. But please don't change the tools yourself um, without checking with the faculty first. Um, so the, the dialog box that comes up next. The first dialog that comes up is the materials setting. Uh, material setting allows you to tell the software what type of material you're going to be working with. FR4 is the PCB that we're using, uh, the printed circuit board. FR4 is fire retardant number four. Um, not having your circuit boards burst into flame is a pretty good idea. Um, it really is describing the configuration of the fiberglass layer and the treatment of that fiberglass that is be between the, the copper cladding. The copper thickness refers to obviously how thick the copper is, and it is in micrometers. Um, typically, copper plate is sold as a weight. For instance, one half ounce of copper, or one ounce copper, two ounce copper. What that's referring to is um, the amount of copper by weight of a square foot of copper. So a half ounce sheet of copper that was one square foot would have a half ounce of copper. Um, those turn into very standard numbers. Half ounce copper is 18 micrometers or 18 micron. Um, one ounce copper is 35 micron. Um, two ounce copper would be 75 micron. Um, mostly we use one ounce copper um, here. 
So we'll change that to 35 micron. The material thickness is uh, almost always uh, 1.5 millimeters. And the underlay thickness should actually be determined by the vacuum table, and you shouldn't have to change that. Um, it won't be 2 millimeters on our machine. So we set those parameters, and then we can come down here. If the board um, does not have, um, you know, if it's a normal 8.5 by 11 sheet, um, we can put those in. If you're using an abnormal size sheet, you can use uh, the mouse here to uh, switch over to use the camera. And the camera, you can kind of jog around to find each corner of the copper plate. So you find the bottom left and the top right. Um, and then the machine will learn where the copper is. We'll just take the defaults and we'll hit OK. This dialog box is the, the next in the sequence. This is the placement dialog box. Um, the only thing we typically would have to do here is do set center. Um, this would actually center the design on the PCB. Um, if you want to have multiple uh, copies. So for example, this fail board has four in the copies in the X direction and four in the Y direction. So this is a four by four up board. Um, that would allow us to take your design and, and kind of span it. The parameters down here allow you to add extra space between those copies. Um, if your board goes edge to edge and you don't have any space between them, you can use this to add uh, some just some extra space for processing and being able to tear apart things and uh, just having space to work. If we're all set, we can hit continue and the machine will uh, start its process. Again, this first part of the process is it will start to drill and we should be able to watch the machine uh, do that. This is the process where if you take your eyes off it long enough, the machine will notice it and crash. So you can't really walk away while it processes your board. In this part here, we're only drilling holes to prepare it for the electroplater. Um, it will go pretty quick. And that's it. So at this point, uh, the machine will process the board. It'll probably take about 15 to 20 minutes for this larger board with the number of holes that are here. Um, in the next video, we'll show you how to plate.